excited to introduce Morgan Kibbe. Hello, welcome. Thank you for having me. And you are the perfect person to speak to about uh, equality in Hollywood, specifically in filmmaking. Uh, you are a composer, and you are here because you are not just nominated, but you are the only female nominee uh, for the Cannes Soundtrack Award. So congratulations on that. Thank you so much. But what does it feel like to be the one woman amongst all these male candidates? Typical. Typical. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, I, I, to be perfectly honest, I was a bit surprised. That you were nominated. Uh, well. Or that there, that there were there more women. That, that there weren't any other female composers. Wow. I mean, it's, the numbers are kind of staggering. When you see how bad it is for female directors, it's even worse for female composers. Uh, in, ter what? in terms of representation. Why is it, do we just not see enough female composers so little girls don't grow up saying, I'm going to be a composer? I actually think that's a big part of it. Uh -huh. I think it's, um, uh, it's hard to articulate because I think it's so nuanced. It would probably be like a whole dinner conversation. Right. But I will say that I think um, from my, I can only speak from my own experience. Yes. And I grew up just not having a cultural conversation that ever said, oh, you should do that. It's really that simple. I, I, I'm very lucky I haven't, except for one or two times, experienced like overt discrimination. Wow. Um, Where did you grow up? Uh, California. Yeah. Over California. Um, so I feel very lucky in that regard, but I think it's, it's, it's almost more subliminal than that. There's just not a larger cultural conversation that says, uh, yeah, you should go to school for that. You should, you can do that. You will do that. You know, th th that's not really, I think, said enough. And so I kind of, I, I mean, I was an artist before I was a composer and uh -huh. I feel like um, it wasn't until someone, I was looking for a producer, I think at the time, and I was very green and I was maybe in like my mid twenties. Mm -hmm. And I remember at the time, uh, my boyfriend at the time said to me, well, you don't need a producer, just do it yourself. Right. And I, and it was really unnerving to me that I hadn't thought that myself because I can t consider myself a curious intelligent human being yeah and even I hadn't it hadn't occurred to me to just figure it out so already the conversation about men is happening yes but it's so much deeper than that if you truly support equality in the workplace and representation women need to start hiring women yep artists need to start hiring female producers yep films need to start hiring female composers exactly. that's the only way that anything changes is we just we give people the work and then they show up and they do a good job. That's how things change. I mean, it's so it's just really women supporting women, but not just talking the talk. No, but I'm so it, that's walking the, and that's, the talk. That's that yeah. is exactly what it is. It's so easy to it's so easy to say that we are supportive of a movement. Yep. But when it comes down to actually changing things, it requires action and it requires thoughtful action uh, where the choices that you make actually have impact. And, you know, it doesn't have to be on a million people. It can be one person. Right. You, you know, I always hire a female assistant when I'm doing scoring. Like um, my dear friend Susie, who's an exceptional mixer and producer in her own right. Mm -hmm. She's just a bit younger than me and she's coming up. She came to the studio with me and was literally the backbone of my studio day and I couldn't have done it without her. But right. it didn't occur to me to not hire another woman because that's how we change things is we get more women in the workplace. There are so many problems between women in the workplace. Is it competition? Is it because we feel like there's not enough food to go around the table and so we're trying to protect our plate? Women are subliminally taught, I think, that there's only room for one woman at the top. Mm -hmm. And the fact of the matter is, is there's room for a million women at the yep. top. And yep. we need to start embracing that and allowing other people to shine, frankly. I mean, I think it's really that simple. I think it's for men and women. I mean, it's, we really, uh, pe people are so conscious of like keeping what's theirs and there's so much fear. It's like protecting your test exactly. in school. It's, it's like, like your let your friends cheat off you. <laughs> I just think, I just think that there is enough room for all of us yep. to have space and, um, exist in the same industry and, and thrive and I you know I feel very lucky in that most of my experiences in the industry have been I've been able to work with so many incredible women yeah and I, I feel very grateful for that well I feel like it's probably a lot of your uh, the way that you look at the world and just your attitude in general that probably attracts you to that kind of experience yeah I mean you you attract what you put out for exactly. sure <laughs> the secret and I'm very much uh, focused on my work first and foremost focused on my work and then I make small decisions here and there that I think uh, are representative of how I'd like to see things progress for, for, for women. What has your experience been at this film festival thus far? Do you feel that there's not enough support for women? You are the only 
female composer who's, you know. Right, but that's no fault of the festivals. Nominated. Okay, so that's not the festival's fault. No, of course not. I mean, they're choosing films based on artistic merit. Yep. And that's not their fault that the directors and producers didn't hire female composers. That's just, that has nothing to do with the festival. So you're saying the festival really is blameless. Like there is this like... I, I mean, honestly, I don't, I don't think there's blame to be put on the festival's shoulders. Mm -hmm. I think that... I understand that there is a need to have representation. And I also, I, I do have much respect for the fact that the festival says we are choosing films that we love. And that's Unmarried. it. I want to be chosen because my work is fantastic. I don't want to be chosen because I'm a female. I'm exactly. sorry. I just don't, I don't want to exist in that category. Right. I want people to love my work because of my work. And if we, st I think it's a very slippery, dangerous, like thin red line. Um, I believe the work starts with me, and mm -hmm. it starts with me hiring women and making sure that they're represented on the teams that I'm in charge of and yes. the companies that I'm involved with. I choose who I work with, and I choose who I hire. That's what I'm in control of. Same thing for productions, same thing for directors who develop relationships with composers, etc. So I think it starts there. And I think it will naturally be represented more in festivals as productions start hiring more women. It's really that simple. You're in that position of power where you can hire women. But what if you're a woman listening to this right now that feels like, you know, she, all she sees at the top are men? What's that? What's the solution? What's, uh, what's an answer for her? It's this right here. We're having the conversation about it. And it's so difficult to talk about because I feel like our, everyone's experience is so unique. Yes. Um, I think it's literally someone saying like what was said to me, like, just go learn Pro Tools. Go learn Ableton. Yep. Go figure it out. Go so take true. a class. Get the assistant job. Hustle. Work. And it's incredible. I see so many wonderful women who are like getting into production now yeah. and like learning the technical side of making music, which has been very reserved for men. Very. And it's very frustrating to very. observe. And I think that that conversation, the fact that we are talking about it and talking about it in a responsible way, we're yeah. not putting blame, we're taking ownership. Yeah. And, um, power we, we take our power back by educating ourselves well it's so true we talk about empowerment and we talk about empowerment and how can we empower ourselves or how can we make these uh social constructs or these companies empower us we just do it ourselves my girlfriend i literally watch her teach yeah. herself how to do everything on youtube right like literally everything well i mean that that's it's and that becomes it's important to note that that's not a that's not a question of gender. That's a question of young people yes. being told that if you're curious about something and you want to do something, learn your craft. Yep. And the older generation, uh, us, yep. people in positions to speak, um, have an opportunity to create that space where they feel that they can follow that impetus in the first place. Yes. You're incredible. Really, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. And good luck on your nomination. Ah, we'll see. Girl, <laughs> thank you. I'm voting for you. <laughs> thank you.